Bringing the Middle Ages to life for kids. Welcome back to Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. With us is Michael Bergen, author of Weird But True, Know-It-All, The Middle Ages from National Geographic Kids. Hi, Michael. Hi, Fred. How are you? Just terrific. Well, congratulations on a fun title and a fun book. You've been helping to get kids excited about history for some time now. Tell us about it. Yes, I um, started freelancing almost 30 years ago. My background degree was in history. Um, I work, wrote for Weekly Reader, which some people may or may not remember, depending on how old they are. It was a classroom periodical that uh, dealt with current events and social studies in general. So I went from there to, to freelancing and doing uh, mostly history books for kids. And it's been a lot of fun. And this focus on the Middle Ages with this title, tell us more about that. Well, I National Geographic came to me wanting to do a book on the Middle Ages. I'd worked with them on a previous book, so they, they knew my stuff and uh, they liked it. So, and they knew that history was really my, my bailiwick. So um, I, I jumped at it because I don't know a lot, didn't know a lot about the Middle Ages, but was always interested in it. I thought this would be a good way for me to learn more and then share that knowledge with the uh, young readers. So let's uh, talk about some of the favorite facts here that you've uncovered and included in, in the title. Well, one of, um, one of them was about animals being put on trial. This was in parts of Europe. Um, if, let's say, an animal escaped from a farm and destroyed property or hurt a person, they would be put on trial and uh, could be found guilty. And I think in some cases they were probably executed for, uh, for their punishment. Um, so a little brutal, but definitely not something we would have imagined, I don't think, that uh, animals would be on trial. And then the one that I, I really enjoy is um, there was a Danish king named Harold, lived in the ninth or 10th century. He uh, unified the Danes, kind of creating the Danish nation. And um, he was known for having a, a tooth that was diseased. And so it looked kind of bluish black. And he got the nickname of Harold Bluetooth. And then centuries later, an engineer is working on a project to try to uni uni unify electrical devices wirelessly, computers, laptops, other things. He read about Harold. It's like, well, he was a unifier of people. I'm do creating something that's going to unify people through the device. And he named it Bluetooth. So every time we use a Bluetooth device, we're kind of paying homage to, uh, to Harold. That is, that is certainly a fun story, and it relates to the techie side of things. So yes. <laughs> do, the, do the Middle Ages get a bad rap? I mean, the image most of us have, I suppose, is pretty bleak. I, I think they do, um, and unfairly. Uh, I think, you know, the Dark Ages phrase came from later historians and kind of reflected the fact that they didn't have access to a lot of good, at least in Europe, didn't have access to a lot of good uh, reference material. And then, of course, it was dark in the sense of lots of warfare and, and life was hard for the majority of people. But I think the book shows that on a global scale, it was really a period of a lot of innovation and um, interaction between peoples of, of, of different parts of the world. And uh, I don't think it was dark at all. I think that so I, I think that, you know, the image we have has been kind of tainted over the years. So I'm hoping this book will be a, a small correction. Has the Game of Thrones uh, done much for interest, uh, do you think, in the Middle Ages? I, I, I would guess so. And I think that, you know, that they certainly draw on uh, things to me that, I mean, not being an expert, but like, you know, Viking culture and other parts of European Middle Age culture. But then they also show some of those other uh, empires and dynasties and, 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 and as far as costumes and sets and things like that. But I, I think that... Um, the Middle Ages, parts of the Middle Ages have, have popped up in pop culture going back, especially in the fantasy genre. I think a lot of fantasy authors have, have drawn on Middle Age uh, motifs and you're going back to Lord of the Rings. So um, I, I, I think Game of Thrones is just the, the you know, the most modern uh, take on, on kind of integrating Middle Age aspects into pop culture. Not necessarily a lot of accuracy involved, I suppose. Well, yes, I, yeah, I, I'm sure. And certainly no dragons in the Middle Ages, but. Uh. Nuts. Okay. Well, tell us, uh, tell us about the dedication in this book uh, to the teachers who inspired you. Well, I, I think everybody has favorite teachers that they look back on and, 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 and realize that they kind of 
sparked an interest in one thing or another. And for me, it was definitely history. Um, it goes back to high school, some really good high school teachers, and then in college, some some very good professors, one in particular who was kind of a mentor when I was doing an independent project. And then after I graduated over the years, we stayed in contact and he would send me books that he knew would be relevant to what I was working on and I could run things by him. And so I, I you know, I had an interest of history on my own, but I think, you know, those, those good teachers really cultivate in whatever field it is you're interested in. And, and so um, I'm hoping that this book will have kids get a little more interested in history and maybe either delve deeper into something that I present or go off into some, some other area, but just to uh, see that history is relevant. You know, online, we call it kind of uh, clickbait, I suppose, something that makes you click on something. Mm -hmm. With the Geo Kids books, they have a great way of taking that concept, I guess, onto a cover of a book or into the promotions for a book, giving you something that, hey, I got to open this. Right, right. Yeah, I know that they did it. I think the teaser on this book was um, well about the uh, the goose quills filled with gold. So you know, I think that that would be so because you, you you wouldn't necessarily equate gold and and uh, and and goose quills together. So I, that definitely piques your curiosity. What about writing you know, for for kids and getting them interested in a, in a topic like this or in a period of history like this? What do you what do you as an author try to do to bring the kids in? Well, I think one thing that I did try to do in this book and I've done in other projects is, is again, making the connections, like something from the past that's still relevant today, whether it's the source of a word or an invention. And we talk in the book about the inventions of the Song Dynasty that you know we still use today, paper money, gunpowder, magnetic compass. So it's, it's making those connections Hopefully that makes them see that um, history is not something distant and dusty. And in particular, in this book, I think part of the way we present the material, I mean, National Geographic is obviously known for their great images and maps. And, and this book is filled with, with great illustrations and photos. So that's going to catch or capture a kid's attention. But then, you know, you've got to follow it up with, with the words, too. And we try to do it both in how we present it as far as breaking text up into little boxes and things that so it's not intimidating. And then the part of the, the weird part, I, I always think of it more as fun than weird. It's, it's, it's presenting the information in a way that uses language in a fun way, whether it's with puns or jokes or allusions to things that are current that you, know, you wouldn't necessarily associate with something from a thousand years ago. So it's, it's kind of combining all those things that uh, hopefully creates the formula that makes it uh, entertaining for kids. And kids will be telling their parents, hey, you know where that word Bluetooth comes from, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, and, and I also hope that if some of the language play, you know, word plays go over the kid's head, that if a parent is reading the book along with a child, they're going to at least appreciate it and get a laugh out of it, too. So, you know, it, it's, I, I feel like I'm, I'm aiming at two audiences at once. Just terrific. Again, the title is from National Geographic Books, Weird But True, Know-It-All, The Middle Ages. Michael Bergman, thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for having me.